Did we get? Did we get the live, panda? dude? We're on. We're live. Yo, what up? This is. Uh, this will be a good one. This is one I've. Uh, I've wanted to do since Brandon and I spoke. We're here with our special guest, Brandon, today. Uh, he's uh, he's from Arizona, and uh, right. Yes, Arizona. Oh, no, I uh, well originally from California. I hate to say it, but uh, born and raised. Well, I was raised pretty much out here forever. So Arizona's yeah. home. So. Since Why do you hate to say you're raised in California? <laughs> no, that's oh, exactly dude. what I said before we started. <laughs> Is the episode long enough? <laughs> Got a couple it's hours. Trip, should, we go, should we go to the fucking Patreon? Should we get? Should we throw it down on there? True. This is the page. I don't know. I, this is the page. Yeah. Don't yeah. worry. All right, good to go. Yeah, I don't like uh, so first and foremost. I don't like having my uh, constitutional rights being fucking stepped on all goddamn days. So, I mean, <laughs> heard that. So let's, yeah, let's just uh, let's stay there. Um, and then you know, it's just a uh, it's a whole other planet over there, man. I mean, it's uh, you know, my whole family on my dad's side, they're all, they're all in show business, and they have been since the Rat Pack days, dude. My grandfather is a, a violinist in the Rat Pack Orchestra, so it's just like yeah. that's that's all they know, man. That, that that's you know anything else besides that, like all the things that I do, uh, they think I'm absolutely nuts. So yeah. So but, what got you into? So you, I, I don't even know what exactly. Yeah. To describe what you did i mean other than just troop dude yeah Sick. troop time but, uh, troop time <laughs> what uh, uh what was how'd you get into it what was your fucking job initially all that so when uh from when i was like really young i always wanted to uh be in the military and it was funny because it was like yeah. right when 9 11 was starting dude the fucking the game was kicking off at that point in time and i was just like put me in let's fucking do this and, uh, you know, it's like I had, yeah. I had two, <laughs> oh, sorry, two sorry. things. No, no, it's all good, dude. It's, no, it's just funny. Like, everybody, everybody, when they were kids, everybody did like, everybody wanted to be a troop when they were a kid. It's, it's Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Well, you know, it's, it. yeah, you know, what's funny about that too is like, uh, I was listening to a previous episode and you guys were just talking about like, uh, you know, like the Indians and everything like that. And just like how violent everything it is. And it's funny because you know, deep down inside of us as, as young boys, I, I strongly believe it's just all, it's inside all of us. And if not, then you're just a fucking gatherer, you know, like, <laughs> just, yeah, no. dude, you're just, you're no. just a gatherer and the rest of us are just being violent as shit, playing cowboys, Indians, cops, robbers. Call pussies, call uh, pussies yeah. gatherers. Oh, that's just yeah. fucking Yeah, fucking yeah exactly, <laughs> dude. Fuck it. That's a nice way of doing it. Like, you fucking gatherer. And they'd be like, what? <laughs> also, what? I feel like with the name me? Brandon Badrick, that's a fucking troop. That's a troop name, dude. Yeah, it's, it's a troop, a, dude. That's a, a sick it's fucking a name. name. Uh, <laughs> it's it's fucking strong. But yeah, I, but, uh, I, I agree with that. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's funny. So you know, it's like I just knew that's what I wanted to do, and oddly enough, too, like I was uh, I was just getting ready to graduate early. I was seventeen years old, and like I was a junior, so I fucking hated high school, and uh, I got offered an art scholarship. And I was like, no, I'm not fucking doing that. You know, you're that gather. You're a little bit yeah, gather. I was, from oh, family. dude. No, no I, I think, uh, yeah, actually, probably. You know, and yeah, I just you're a slight fucking, gatherer. What kind of art were you? Gatherer. What kind of art were you doing? Painting and drawing. You know, it's like oh, that's, that's a lot of, that's a lot of these samurai masters would like stop from battle and do like a quick haiku in the grass. So I, I think, you're, <laughs> yeah, right. I think you have yeah. balance, dude. <laughs> I, I think, I think that's what it is. Is finding balance. You know, and, and especially in life, I would just need to go and try to find balance between the things that make us who we think we should be versus who, what we actually need to become, you know? Mm -hmm. So for me, I knew like, yeah, I like art, but in reality, it's like, you know, they had my, my art teacher showed up with the ceramics teacher, the vice principal to sit me down and have a, a chat with me about it. And I didn't want to be like, what, what am I going to do with art? You want me to become a fucking art teacher? You know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like I don't want to make, I don't make 20,000 a year, you know, and like uh, teaching kids how to, you know, fuck off essentially for an hour. So it's just like, I didn't want to <laughs> Yeah, it's like, what am I gonna do with that shit? Yeah. So yeah. So and it's funny. You know, it's like, funny to sit there and say that too. And like an art teacher is like, you're really good at art. You're like, yeah. What do yeah. I want to be? Fucking you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah a it's loser. Like, I yeah, I don't want to be a dick. You know, it's just like you fucking hippie. You know, I loved her. She's awesome. But it's just like, <laughs> look at your life. You know, it's like, oh, are man, you satisfied? Look, looking back on this, how did you, how did you think you were like you know? Because it seems like you were connected to that world, and just something inside yeah. you was like, fuck this shit. This sucks. 
Yeah, pretty much. I mean, just because in reality, it was like, uh, what, how is that going to make me a living? You know, and like, and also too, I think looking around at all the fucking shit kids that are in my, <laughs> my art class, it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to teach these kids how to, you know, paint and draw. It's like, wait, yeah, man. they're not going to, they're not going to want to do that. Most of the kids that were in that class anyway, were just taking it just to take it. And they had like no passion, you know, for what they're doing. So why, why would I want to, pass on something that I uh, enjoy as a hobby, you know, down to someone else, you know? So, I mean, it, there's so many aspects to it. More so the reality is financial gain, you know, it's like, yeah. how, what kind of life are you going to make with that? <laughs> I don't want to, like, I don't want to jump ahead uh, too much, but I, yeah. your, your, your California accent is very funny and imagining it in a fire, <laughs> a, a firefight in yeah. the middle of a firefight, like, yeah. dude, get down, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, just like, yeah. Fucking Hodgies are everywhere, bro. Yeah, yeah. they're fucking, <laughs> dude, ter- fucking winning prizes, the fucking Terry Fair, man. We're just having a great time. So, so you decided, so, uh, well, I had yeah. two options. I had two options. One, uh, join the Marine Corps because that was my stepdad's fucking thing. So it's like being raised around that, you know, mm. instills a certain amount of pride in you. The other was I wanted to be a Navy SEAL really fucking badly. So <laughs> what do I do? So the thing that sucked for me, and this is shame on the Marine Corps for this, especially at a time of war, I already had my first tattoos from my, like right here, my whole chest all the way down to here. So it's like chest, half sleeve. And they're like, no way. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? You need, you need meat for the grinder and you're telling me fucking no because I have a tattoo. And they're like, yeah, that's yeah. so out of regs. You can't have that, blah, blah, blah. And that's how the Marine Corps is. They're super uptight. You know, you got to have a, uh, a crystal clear image to fucking, you know, slaughter a village. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> that's just, that's just how they, you know, they're, yeah, they they're were, like, uh, yeah. they were, dudes that, <laughs> that is funny uh, as fuck. Yeah. That was a problem for uh, Navy's Navy's football team because their coach is Hawaiian. So they they try to get a lot of fucking like Samoans and shit, but they're all covered in fucking tats, and yeah. they can't get into Annapolis because of their tribal tattoos and shit. And now they're well, making you, concessions. Yeah, yeah did you did you see that, that guy? Uh, yeah, he's from New, yeah, that guy from New Zealand, man. He's got like a full. Uh, I forgot what it's called. Uh, uh, forgive me, but it's I think it's like a Moapu or something like that. It's face tattoo, like full face tattoos. Yeah, the warrior face tattoos. He's a Navy officer for the New Zealand Navy. Uh, he got it approved wow. that he was allowed to do it, you know. So now you got this fucking dude just commanding a fleet or some shit, dude. He, he's he's got full, yeah, right. I know. I'm like, hell yeah, dude. I'm like, that that would be awesome, man. I yeah, face tats should be mandated. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, you know, uh, it's like so yes. it was pretty it was pretty crazy, but yeah. So for me, what happened, you know, then was that I was told I, I got pulled over by the Navy recruiter and he's like, Hey, he's like, you want to join the Navy? He's like, this is how you get into the Marine Corps. And I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, that makes no sense. You're two separate branches. And he's like, well, the, uh, the Marine Corps is a department in the Navy. Not, not a lot of people realize that. So all their medical, all their religious supply, everything like that, it all comes from the Navy. You know, that's what Marines fans for my ass rides and maybe equipment. So, you know, it's like, so, so the funny part was like, all right, well then how do I get in the Marine Corps from here? And he's like, become a Navy corpsman. And again, I'm like, what the fuck is that shit? And he's like, oh, you're going to become a, a medic, you know, combat medic. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit, <laughs> like in my head. Uh, and you know, it's like, that's, that's so far left field from what I thought I was going to be doing. And he's like, no, no, it's great. He's like, you'll, you'll be a skeleton key. You can go wherever you can stay on the Navy side. You can go to the Marine Corps side. He's like, what do you want to do? And I was like, dude, I just want to be a Navy SEAL. <laughs> you know? and he's like, yeah. all right, you know, we'll do the pre pre screen thing, you know, with you and see if you can do it and all sort of shit. And I was like, all right, cool. Do the pre screen. I passed the first time I, I enlisted in the Navy as a Navy corpsman. I then go uh, from that point forward to boot camp. In boot camp, they had a program at the con- time called Dive Motivator. That, like they pull you out of your regular boot camp to go to this class and swim and run and, and do all that bullshit and get you all ready to go. And uh, and so I, I did that all the way up until I went to Naval Hospital Corps School. And so you go through Naval Hospital Corps School to become a corpsman, and then they pull us aside again and they're like, "All right, who here is becoming an FMF corpsman?" So it means Fleet Marine Force it means you're going to the Marine Corps side. And I was like, well, that's what I'm signed up for. So I better go over there. And uh, they're like, listen, all you guys who are here in this dive motivator program, 
Um, you know, if you are interested in, you know, still doing special operations, you know, all the guys don't want to be SEALs, you don't have to be here. Um, but there's another option for you guys too. And I was like, all right, what's that? And they're like, um, you know, they start going over everything. And it was funny because we had this salty old Navy chief, you know, he's probably like in his fifties, but this guy was just like full of piss and fucking vinegar. And uh, he was a Navy corpsman. And he's like, yeah, you're going to Marine force recon. We need a uh, special amphibious reconnaissance corpsman. And I'm like, that is a long fucking title. You know, yeah, what, awesome. what is, yeah, right. I know. And you know how much men love titles, you know, especially when you're young, you're like, Oh, I get a cool title. <laughs> and so I was like, well, you know, what's this? And he's like, it's uh, for at the time it was considered Marine Corps special operations, but they didn't want to call it that because the Marines are, again, they're fucking so stupid for shit. But essentially they're just like, <laughs> probably going to get some shit for that, but Hey, you know what? Marines are fucking dumb. So, <laughs> and they all it know is it. Funny, they like, know it. They uh, need like John Cena to come bust into your door. Like, damn, nice haircut. Uh, <laughs> dude, right? I yeah, fucking yeah. don't even <laughs> don't you get me started on that shit. Uh, that's a separate story, man. I actually got to meet him. <laughs> oh, nice. So yeah. So he, uh, all right. So this, uh, this chief's giving this, you know, this whole rundown and everything that we're doing. And uh, he's like, so all you guys who are here on SEAL contracts, essentially, you know, it'd be better if you guys would come on over and do a uh, force reconnaissance tryout for it. And I was like, well, what's the incentive of doing that? You know, I raised my hand like an asshole. <laughs> and he's like, well, basically, he's like, you'll get promoted faster. You'll get a much higher medical education. And on top of it, too, man, man shit. He just kept saying man shit. <laughs> and I was like... <laughs> all right. You know, so he's like, if anyone's interested, you know, hang out. And if you're not leave. So like a couple of us hung back and we're just like, all right, let's check this out. Starts playing a slideshow, dude, like complete slideshow of like everything and some videos. And it's just Marines doing the same fucking shit that Navy SEALs do. They're, they're scuba diving. They're, you know, skydiving. We're, you know, going through and, and doing hostage rescue shit, just blowing things up. And each slide you just go, look at that man shit you know like and then you done <laughs> next slide is like look at that fucking shit doesn't it get your dicks hard you know man shit and you're just like <laughs> you're like this guy man i swear to god he's just such a, fucking, <laughs> such a cliche you know it's so funny but yeah I understand. it's funny it's funny for him like to go through a slide and then it's like dude scuba dive and he's like all right that one's kind of fucking gay uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, dude, dude I fucking, swimming together I, he's like all right man shit man yeah, shit. Yeah, <laughs> he's like he's like look at these little shorts you like these little shorts man shit <laughs> like fuck man <laughs> yeah it's awesome it's, yeah you know so it's it's funny and i'm just watching all this stuff and i'm like all right cool you know not sign me up you know i'll go try this out and see if it's gonna benefit my career it's it looked to me like the same thing i'm 17 barely 18 you know, I'm just Damn. like, all right, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm going to go fucking, I'm going to try this out. So he's like, all right, pre-screen is tomorrow, you know, show up at fucking 5 a.m., you know, at the pool and we're doing all shit. And I was like, all right, cool. He's like, it's a, uh, you know, boots and pants run the whole nine. Mind you, I've been already now like two, no, nah, probably about four months into this like dive motivator program, maybe a little, a little bit longer. And, uh, you know, so and I'm that's, thinking like. That's four months straight of. Yeah, it's just training. Like fucking you know? boot camp for four months? No, no, no. You you go to boot camp, and then once you're done with boot camp, you go to Naval Hospital Corps School, you know, and during that time, you're okay. still in that program. Yeah, mm -hmm. sorry. And so... No, no, no. That was me. No, no, it's good. I'm happy to clarify. It's so, funny, though, that you were that age, and you were like, oh, skydiving and shit. Yeah, I'll try that. I was... Uh, so when, I went yeah. to, when I was going to West Point, I was terribly afraid of just rappelling down like a 40-foot wall. <laughs> like, I, I remember seeing that on the like what's gonna happen at, at beast yeah. and i was like i'm i'm gonna i might quit Dude, yeah. at the top of that tower <laughs> like, you're, gonna, you're, gonna, gonna, you're gonna have you're gonna have the private pile moment you're stuck at the top oh, of the fucking I was, I was, <laughs> That's how the dick is ladder, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, it's it's funny because you look at all the shit and and you're watching it. You know, it's it's like watching fighters fight. You're like, dude, fuck yeah, I could totally do that. You get all amped and shit like that until your ass gets hit in the fucking face, man. And it's like, yeah, all right, sure. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, that's I mean, that's hundred percent. Yeah, oh, yeah dude, that's reality. Me getting yeah. punched, me getting punched in the face was literally like getting yelled at and having to jog somewhere right away. And I was just like, <laughs> yeah. this is harder. Than I thought it would be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, I was like, I'm funny. going home. 
What well, if you just brought part, like a general's costume with you and put it on the first day? <laughs> what happened? You're like, no, no, I'm gonna do this one. I'll yeah. Just got well, on a horse that, and just stood. Yeah, yeah true. You should have showed up dressed like Napoleon before they gave yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. Like, oh, absolutely. Like, yeah. oh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah, as long as I get a sword. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get a sword, you're good to go. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's funny, like all the shit, because like even you know, like what you're saying, where it's just like you're scared. If when people say, you know, like they're not scared of skydiving, they're not scared of, you know, uh, scuba diving and all this other shit. It's like, you're full of shit, dude. <laughs> like, yeah. I swear to God, man. It's like anything that can go wrong can fucking go wrong and everything wants to kill you. You know, it's just like another echelon of holy shit, you know, where you're just like, all right, so today we're going to do like a two mile ocean swim, you know, fuck the diving part. Let's just talk about the swimming part, you know open water ocean swim and, and and you're like yeah it's daytime i'm being dropped off in the middle of the ocean i gotta go swim back all the way through that you know all the way to the shore fuck this you know it's like and uh, everything you know you're like every oh, I, I don't i don't know what's did underneath anybody me. Say, did anybody <laughs> say no oh yeah, dude. No. <laughs> yeah people, people get in the water people get in the water and they'd be like fuck this shit dude like and then yeah. you know put their arm up and wave for the fucking boats to come get them and and you know, it's just like, I understand, you know, and it's definitely not for everyone. You know, I, I mean, I had my moments uh, where I was just like, fuck this. But, you know, it's like even before I got to that point, just the screen to get into a, uh, a force reconnaissance, you know, type slot to go to that school, I tried out three times, you know, like it was mm. 10 times fucking harder than the SEAL one was. I don't know why, you know, because I mean, we both grew through hell you know to to get there but it's just the marine corps standards on things are much much higher um than you know the navies because i mean it's the navy so, <laughs> so well, just, yeah. just so i'm so they drop you in the middle of, how do they how do you know where to go well if like so if we're doing like a training operation you know like a uh, like when you're going through school which is brc for us so when you're going through brc um you essentially uh like if if they'll take us out on a boat drop us off in the middle of water and then from that point you just follow the boot like to the buoys you swim to each buoy essentially God. and Fuck and still yeah that's so and, fucking scary dude. yeah well it's funny because like there's also times too where we'll start on the shore so we'll start on the shore we'll swim a mile out it's hit a worse. buoy swimming a mile then, out is so yeah, dude, scary dude. swim a mile out hit a buoy <laughs> then swim a mile back in and then run another mile across the beach so it's a triangular pattern essentially so it's like you're, you're doing like Holy a two mile shit, swim man. then you're doing a fucking mile run and they make you do this like six seven times you know and sometimes it's time you don't even you lose count of how many times you're doing it until you know a they, they tell you're done or b you're just you have no idea what fucking time of the day it is anymore and oh. what you had for breakfast because you're so disoriented that luckily if someone will be around you'd be like hey dude you're done you know <laughs> so oh my god you know it's just like yeah it, it's one of those things where you know you got to be 150 percent into it you know mm -hmm. so yeah yeah from anything like that to you know like our type of hell week that we have which we call the longest day um to like a bunch of other stuff you know it's like everything is pretty much a test of how much you're willing to, to sacrifice of yourself like how ready and willing you are to die for this cause essentially to get to this spot and it's crazy too because it's like your first week you know just there we we call we call it pool week you know it's, it's we call it the great equalizer because essentially you know when you go through pool week we're just making you tread water for hours at a time and then doing you know swimming exercises and we'll start with a class size like 300 and you know 15 people and by the end of pool week we're down to like 200 115 sometimes you know just depending on depending on the time of the year also if it's cold or not so it's like you just watch people drop you know and and then by the time you graduate from brc you know it's like uh you'll be down to sometimes 30 between 30 to 15 guys you know and then once we're even done with that we still have uh individual operator you know courses that we have to go through um which are like specialty schools and and then basically it's it's kind of like sharpening all the other tools for us, you know, as land warfare. Yeah. How much, uh, shit. how much do you fuck people up in CrossFit now? Oh, dude, <laughs> no, man. <laughs> you, must, yeah. you must murder people. <laughs> no, dude, I'm fucking, at this point in time, man, I'm, I'm just, I got home gym now. I know you saw that shit, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sick. and 
And then on top of it, too, more importantly, yeah, I got a lot of fucking boo boos, man. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. it's just like, we'll get uh, into that. We'll get into oh, this. Yeah, yeah this oh, might yeah. be jumping ahead, but I'm just genuinely curious now. Like, if you're like, I, I don't know what you do for work now, but like, what if you're at a job, like, what is it like hearing somebody complain about like, they're like, man, I'm fucking tired. I'm gassed. <laughs> You're just like, uh, yeah. okay. <laughs> it's, yeah. You know, it, it's hard for me to, to be like, fuck you pussy. You know, like I can only do that with certain things. Um, but for the most part, those are just my experiences, you know, and like, and what I went through because it's like, uh, I'm, I'm a son, you know, I'm, I'm first generation here in the United States. My grandmother is a Holocaust survivor. So I can't fucking imagine the horrible yeah, shit, true. dude, that she true. went through. And then when I bitch, she's like, pussy, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. like in, in, her, in her thick Yugoslavian accent. You know, you yeah, know, you're like, we had like, to, we had to run a lot. And she's like, oh, oh yeah. Was your, was your family ripped out of your arms? And yeah. Yeah. No? yeah. All right, well. Oh, dude. No, no. Like, if I, if I would, if I would cry about something when I was younger, she'd be like, you can cry till tomorrow. I don't fucking care. You know, like, she'd tell me this shit, dude. Like, and, and it's just, I, it was like having a fucking angry European drill sergeant, dude, every day. Yeah. It's just, it's I bet like, the Holocaust did create some mean nanas and papas, dude. Oh, dude. Yeah. She <laughs> they was, came out she was a little fucking, mean, dude. Yeah, meanest, she was, dude. She was mean, dude. I, she, like, not mean, but she was just tough as fuck. I yeah. Mean, I, yeah. That woman survived everything. But, you know, it's just funny because, like, when I look at other people's experiences with things that they deal with, I can't compare them to mine because those are mine. You know, the only thing that I can do is, like, when I hear veterans, you know, like, I, I don't, again, I'm probably getting shit on about this, but I don't give a fuck because, you know, it's stopping babies. Stopping babies and get over it. Like, that's a part of your fucking life. When World War II veterans came home, you know, they got on with shit. You know, you don't see that anymore. You see everyone, oh, you know, it's like all this crying and oh, I have this disorder. It's like, well, you joined the fucking military. What do you think was going to happen, asshole? You joined in the middle of a fucking war. Do you think you're going to be serving, you know, fucking hot dogs to people or, you know, getting your fucking dick licked? I mean, I don't understand. You know, it's like, what do you expect is going to happen? Oh, I was, was just going to be a truck driver. Yeah, you're driving shit through fucking combat. Like, what do you expect is going to happen? You know, it's just like, what the fuck? So it's like, Fair and point. that also, yeah, you know, and this is just Fair like, point. Uh, yeah, I just, you know, it's me, to me, it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, the, those are, again, my choices. Those are their choices. I knew my expectations of what was going to happen to me, you know. I just, I know that most people don't have that type of awareness, you know, I, I lack that awareness with certain things too sometimes, you know, where I'm just like, I'm invincible and then something happens and I'm like, okay, I'm old, you know, like, yeah. so, you know, it's just like, it, it just, that's just how those things work. So, um, yeah. <laughs> also uh yeah. just just you know it goes without saying but for the listener uh don't repeat what he just said unless you like saw combat oh yeah like, oh, like yeah. i'm not gonna walk around and be like all these fucking pussy ass gatherings oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> all these yeah, don't, don't fuck i'm out. definitely not shitting you know i'm definitely not shitting of course, my, of course. Know, all the veterans I just don't like, uh, you know, everyone's got such a negative fucking attitude all the time, you know, constantly. Everyone's so negative with everything that they do, you know, where it's just like it, you don't move forward. You, it, you're stuck backwards and in one space all the time and nothing gets on in your life. You know, it's like you don't go pursuing other ambitions. You, you don't go making new friends and relationships with people. Uh, you know, your, your life just doesn't improve because you're stuck in one spot. And for me, you know, that's, that's frustrating to see because everyone that's usually not everyone, but the majority of people that come from my community of things, you know, and the, and the whole special, you know, cool guy sense of things, um, you know, it's like, we usually end up going, you know, pursuing education. I know there's a lot of other veterans that do too, but we also end up, you know, starting businesses or just doing things to be successful. You know, most guys get book deals, but that doesn't happen for people in my position. So, you know, it's like, no one cares. You got, about well, that, you got but, a Patreon episode. Yeah, what? there you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you need well, to do to get a book deal? You can't write a book yeah. about this shit? I don't know, man. No, you it's just from, like from... fucking... It's yeah. Seals get book deals. People don't give a shit what, you know, what, uh, you know, people like an air force pararescue or fucking, you know, MARSOC and, and, uh, maybe special operations, other things. No one cares about that stuff. They only care about green berets or, uh, Navy seals. And they even tell us to do, you know, like while we're going through training, you know, in the beginning of things and, 
it, one thing that we it, it is like a mantra for us is that there will be no pretty women waiting for you, no movies written about you, uh, no book deals, no one gives a fuck about you except the person next to you and yourself. That's it. Other than that, you're fucked. <laughs> you know, like yeah. that's kind of that's kind of how we look at it. You know, because it just kind of helps create that that mentality of like I'm not better than this person, and then on top of it too, like don't try to go and do all this shit just so that way you can make yourself famous with a shitty deal, you know, later on, uh, for the seals that do do it. Good for you guys. You know, it must be awesome making a lot of money, but at the same time too, it's like, that's, you know, it's not for us. I, I mean, I'm sure I could write a book, uh, about the many things I've seen and done in my life, but at yeah, the same man. time too, you know, it's like, who the fuck would care? Like, honestly, it's only going to be a handful of people, you know, I think, I don't know. Let's, let's, get yeah, yeah, yeah. let's get into it. Let's get into it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, let's get into it. Yeah, yeah. So, so anyways, uh, so you get through camp. Training. Yeah. 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 So I get through, so it's three years of training, like three solid fucking years oh, of training, you know? Yeah. What year, lot. what year is this? This is 2002 going in. So, and then by the time I'm done, it was almost 2005, like going, going out. Yeah. And then now, now I'm working towards my master's degree in nursing too, because, um, you know, it's one of, one of the things that help, uh, with my career essentially. Mm. Uh, cause yeah. again, doing special operations medicine, it's a lot, you know, I have to, I, I'm trained to not just in combat medicine, but veterinary medicine, dentistry, emergency, minor surgeries, and more importantly, how to maintain life for up to 72 hours, you know, without being calling in a, a CASAVAC or, you know, helicopter evacuation. Oh. So, you know, it's like, there's a lot that goes to it, but then on top of it too, a lot of people don't know this, but the nurse practitioner position and the physician's assistant position were both created during Vietnam by the military to fill slots that doctors refused to fill. So they took all the best and brightest medics that were out there and created these two positions for them, put them in school and then dropped them back off in the jungle to take better care of the soldiers. So, so that's where those positions came from. A little, little piece of interesting history, mm, but it's a morsel. Yeah. yeah, it is. But so, you know, it's like my choices at the time were PA or NP and I was like NP all the way. Uh, Cause being a PA is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> so, and uh, so I did that and then onward and on to, you know, multiple fucking deployments and all kinds of other fun shit. And, meeting a lot of cool people. But uh, it, it, the thing that's interesting is like, I didn't realize uh, the ins and outs of things. You know, you're so naive, like when you get into this stuff that you think like, oh, you know, now I'm a, I'm a war guy, you know? And it's like, no, you're not just a war guy. You're a diplomat. You're, <laughs> you're a kingmaker and a king toppler. You are uh, working hand in hand with other government agencies, including the DEA and uh, the CIA, Defense Intelligence Agency, uh, you know, you're, you're doing, so, like, we train the DEA's military, they have a military unit called uh, FAST teams, and uh, they work in Afghanistan and Iraq and stuff like that, so that way they can, you know, kind of topple drug empires that are, that are growing constantly there, because uh, that all funds terrorism, essentially. And it's Afghan Kush, so <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> fucking you know, Wayne's World party time out in those fields, man. But <laughs> stand a little too close to those bonfires. But uh, you know, it's what, it's, uh, it's what year? Where was your first deployment? What year was it, or uh, where was it? So my first deployment was in uh, Iraq, and so we were going in right after like the huge siege of Ramadi. And Ramadi was like the holy shit part of the Iraq war. And that to me was just like, uh, it was, it was really overwhelming. Cause I mean, one, you know, you're, you're, you're thinking again, like, Oh, I'm going to do all this cool, like special operations shit after all this fucking training. No, not the case because during that time they didn't even know how to use Navy SEALs properly. They, they're just like, well, we're going to, you guys are on the deployment cycle. So go assist the Marines, you know? And like they had no idea what the fuck they're like doing half the time. They didn't have operations, you know, fully planned and set up. They weren't like being ran the way that they should be ran. And it was the same thing for us too. So essentially they just put us in our, in our trucks and they made us, uh, you know, go on patrols, you know, long range reconnaissance patrols and stuff like that. And then uh, even times where, where we were trying to get behind enemy lines and there were even times where we put us out in boats on the rivers. So that way we can go and start like, you know, meeting people in the villages for the, uh, the Kurdish villages and, and talking to people and stuff like that and getting information. And so that was our, that was our biggest thing was like, okay, just go gather all the information you can go create relationships. But, and 
other than that, we're just kind of like free to go. Like they, they, we didn't, they didn't give us too much of a, uh, you know, uh, of a, uh, a plan, you know, it's just like, all right, here, go here, take care of this, you know, get to this point, yeah. try to overtake this part, get this information, you know, I, and uh, everyone, and I'm everyone sorry. is, no, no, it was fine. Everyone's like used differently, you know, but it's just crazy because, you know, during that time of the war, they literally had no fucking idea what the hell to do with us. You know, it's like they yeah. took army green berets and they're like, you guys are going to Afghanistan. We might take some of you guys, put you in Iraq. We're going to take a bunch of Navy SEALs. We're going to put them in Iraq. God knows what the fuck we're going to do with you. Uh, we're going to take a bunch of uh, Marine recon, Fort recon, just get in trucks and fucking drive. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, I mean, we had a little bit of an op, but it's it just like they, you could tell that they're just like, yeah, I don't know. You know, it's like, uh, yeah. good luck. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because that's phase one. It's like, let's just be there and see what they do. Yeah, pretty much. You know, especially that there's so much happening at that time. I mean, we just, you know, we took Baghdad. We were already going into Ramadi and Fallujah. And, you know, it's like, that was like the worst part of the fucking war. You know, I mean, it was just insanity. The things that were happening. I mean, and the army, you know, it's like, literally, it was just, like I said earlier, like meat for grinder. It's like, they were just piling these fucking shitty, you know, APCs, armored, or armored personnel carriers, sorry. And they would like drive down, you know, roads and they would just get blown the fuck up. Dude. And there'd be like, you know, 10 guys in there, just dead. You'd open up the back and it's just like body parts everywhere. Um, you know, and like, and then they'd be like, okay, well that fucking sucks. Let's send another one. You know, it's like, they'll do shit like that. You know, and it's just like, dude, what are you doing? Yeah. It was super yeah. unorganized chaos, you know, and uh, on, on that end. And, uh, you know, it's like, there's, it was just, I, I mean, it's hard for me to articulate, you know, mm -hmm. like all the things that I've, I've seen and experienced, you know, it's like all the stories that I do remember, um, you know, were, were really funny or like, holy shit, you know, there's definitely a few that stick out in my mind for sure um but for me to actually properly articulate every little thing sure especially so no, long ago you know it's yeah just it's like, really it's, hard yeah it's a it's a it's a difficult um it's not hard for me to talk about it. it's just more so hard for me to like describe the words and then also to uh find you know like a good starting point you know for each yeah. thing what but, was uh when was your first, uh, when was the first like fucking firefight you got in? Do you remember that? Oh yeah, dude. That, that was during that time. And it was funny. Uh, we just so happened to have our, uh, he was our, um, our gunnery sergeant. And this guy has been in since the end. I want to say the end, of, like early eighties. I think he, he's went in. So it was funny. Cause like, see, he did desert storm, desert shield and all this shit. And, you know, this guy had a, had a really interesting reputation because I remember during training seeing this guy, he, uh, he looked like a 1950s dad, like Michael Douglas and falling down. Like he looked like that, dude. It, yeah. was, it was funny as shit, but he sounded like he ate hot gravel every day for fucking breakfast, dude, the way that he would talk. I mean, it was just, it was wild that, that, you know, it was, all right, you know, like it was just so gravelly and this guy would run circles around us. He smoked two packs of Marlboro Reds a day and he you know you wore he wore the old boonie cap he wore the old web gear with his fucking k-bar on it and he had the big huge fucking glasses and he literally looked like Michael Douglas dude it was, it was nuts and uh so we're out there and we get um we're we're driving our trucks down one of our trucks gets hits an IED so immediately I'm just like fuck you know all right I'm up you know here we go so I run to that truck. Luckily, everyone's okay. You know, it's like just, you know, some, some shit that needs stitches. And, and how many, uh, how many medics, how many medics were with you guys at this point? And how big one. is yours? You're the only medic? I'm the only one. Yeah, I'm the only one. Okay. Sometimes, and this is sometimes, a, like a squad of 10 or yeah, how many yeah. you guys are? No, no. There's, uh, at this point in time, there's 20 of us running together. Okay. So I'm in charge of these 20 guys in medical care. Uh, sometimes we'll ride with two corpsmen, you know, but uh, at this point in time, we're kind of spread thin because not a lot of people are signing up at the time to be, uh, to become corpsmen. I mean, even for yeah. me, like when I went in, they're like, uh, they're like, Hey, if you do this and this job, you know, we'll give you, you know, uh, we'll give you a $20,000 bonus, you know? And that was the other incentive too, where it was just like, yeah, Oh, yeah, fuck yeah, yeah, dude. So if I go through all this training, <laughs> do all this shit at the yeah. end, I get 20 grand, you know? And again, I'm 17 at that time. So I'm like, yeah. Oh fuck. Yeah. Sign me up. You know? Yeah. So, 
Uh, and uh, you know, I got that. I got that twenty grand. But I'll tell you right now, the, the fucking government taxes the the Christ out of it, and you get like fifteen something, and then what? you still have to pay more taxes on it. Yeah, so taxes. It's like, yeah, dude, what a it motherfucker! Fucking, bro. That's yeah. absolute bullshit. Yeah, it's dude. fucking bananas, dude. I didn't yeah, know that's what's gonna one. happen. So they and take again, them. So they take uh, the military pay that's supposed to be paid by the taxpayers and tax that too. It's like how yeah, the fuck does yeah. that work? Oh yeah, just tax well, on tax on tax. This pays for schools. Yeah. I think it's a big yeah, Ponzi yeah, yeah. scheme now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, that it's a huge Ponzi scheme. Yeah, but they're <laughs> suckering. Bullshit. They're suckering dudes in at the time. They're like, hey, oh. if you become FMF combat corpsman, you know, it's like you'll get a fucking huge bonus and all this shit. So you know, it's like at that time too. You know, it's like when when that ID went off, and I'm the only corpsman at that time. I think there's only about 112 of me in my position, my job throughout the whole entire military. Jesus. So we're, yeah, we're a very, very, very small group, you know, at that time. Now I believe there's much more. I, I don't know. I don't really pay too much attention to it anymore because it's just madness. All the things that are yeah. going on currently there within the military. Bumped it but, up to 22 um, grand. Like we'll give you 22. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give me 22. And yeah. you know, we're going to change the title and add more fucking things on the end of it. You know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> So, yeah, but during that time, uh, so the, uh, the truck, you know, in front, like I said, I was, we're two trucks behind that they hit the ID. I, I get out and right when I get out, dude, just, it's fucking hail of bull, bullet fire immediately. <laughs> You're just like, and this is my first like experience with everything. So it's just like, yep, right into the fire. Go have at it, you know? Damn. And so immediately I'm just like, fuck, what do I do? You know, and like it, training just kicks in you start going into muscle memory. I run in that truck, dude. I start pulling people out of it. And same with, you know, a couple of my other guys start pulling people out of the truck. Uh, we start dragging them over while taking fucking fire. I mean, two of the guys I was dragging, uh, the, they both got shot. I wasn't dragging them at the same time, just two separate times. They both got shot as not dragging them over, you know, and trying to stay low behind the trucks. And, um, you know, we start getting into like huge, heavy, heavy engagement. And then, you know, it's like, we where the way the roads are in this area and a lot of places they, they always have like these irrigation ditches or like there's some farmland or something just everything looks like it's constantly under some type of fucking barney rubble construction shit you know it's, just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fucking yeah. nuts dude mm. it's it's literally fucking the flintstones man it's it's not so bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know it's like we uh we we go in and we start realizing hey we're starting to get a good stronghold of all this and then you know we, we take off from the road against and start advancing towards the buildings you know that are that we're taking all the fire from we just start going in there and you know thank god we have room clearing experience because at that time other marines didn't have it yet except cat teams or counter assault teams you know it's like they're the only infantry units at the time that had room clearing experience no one expected that they had to go house to house to house to house to house. I mean, literally, this is what you had to fucking do every day. You're just clearing houses like a SWAT team with, with the, you know, people are just fucking new to this, you know, so it's like we were getting killed left and right. Um, so we advanced over, uh, in long story short, we, we ended up taking, yeah, we ended up taking over the building. And then finally, dude, like after like a couple of minutes of just chill, uh, it just hit me, dude. And I was just like, oh, fuck, you know, I just got this second wave of like extra adrenaline and then I start shaking like profusely. And that gunnery sergeant that I brought up early he walks over to me and he's like, Doc, you need to calm the fuck down. He's like, You smoke? I'm like, No. And he's like, You do now. Literally pulled a lit cigarette out of his mouth and shoved it in my mouth like it was his dick. And he's like, Enjoy, enjoy the bad habit, motherfucker. You know, it's like, Damn. <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah. That's, that's, and that's how I started smoking. So, <laughs> <laughs> you still smoke cigarettes? I do like a piece of shit. I quit every year and then I start back up. Because... That's a good, that's a good start. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's that's yeah, about yeah, as good a start yeah. as you get, dude. You earned yeah, it. Absolutely. Yeah. You yeah, need I him to it. come yeah. back to like pull it out of your mouth. And, like you're done now. Yeah. yeah right. I know. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sweet. Thanks. This is, this is gay. Whack. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, yeah. yeah. So that was, that was my first experience with all that. And you know, it's like, it, there are many more to come after that, you know, cause uh, we we got orders to to go into Ramadi, you know, at that time, and uh, start clearing out buildings and stuff. So then we got on the, the building clearing train, you know, because oh, we're, we're 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 pretty efficient at it. But then on top of it too, we link up with other Marine infantry units and even sometimes Army units, and we teach them as we're fucking doing it, like calling oh. it out as we're clearing houses. You know, like okay, like stand over here. 
you know, uh, this is going to be your point, man. This guy, door, you know, it's like we're yelling all this shit out as we're fucking. So it's like literally trial by fire. You're learning this shit as, you know, um, as it's happening, you know, yeah. before this, you know, it's like before all this started, we're being taught conventional warfare. We're being taught guerrilla warfare and all this other stuff. But infantry units are just being taught at that time or they were at the top taught at the time just conventional warfare you know it's like very like linear and this is how we're going to do it and, and it's almost like and the king's men shall send his first yeah. fighters forward and you know oh, it's like fuck. that's you know conventional warfare just doesn't fucking work anymore at all you know so it's like the military literally at this time was still transitioning to like what do we do you know like yeah. how do we go about doing this you know and um and so it was, it was, it was all new, you know? So for us, especially we're like, well, this is how we're fighting warfare now. And luckily, like I said, you know, it's like we already had that training, but now we got to really sharpen it. You know, this is not something that uh, we're, we're used to doing on a daily basis. And it's fucking exhausting clearing a house, you know, especially, especially one that just say it's like three bedrooms, a kitchen and a fucking toilet, you know, and like, but it's two stories tall. And then this even shittier part is that in Iraq and even Afghanistan, these little fuckers are like rats, dude. They build they build tunnels everywhere. <laughs> so yeah, they have tunnel yeah. systems, dude. And you're just like, <laughs> I don't know where this goes and ends. And dear God in heaven, yeah. I hope there's no one in there. Dude, I mean, how like, many how many would you do that. a day? Uh, the, uh, one day, I think we did uh, about twenty. Jesus fucking Christ, yeah, bro. dude. And it's just you're doing this all day and night, you know. And then the shitty part is while this is happening there's other Marine and army units doing the same fucking thing across the street. Ugh. And they have no idea that we're in this cause they might not be in our comms channel. And the next thing you know, they think that we're the fucking enemy. So then they start shooting at us like a bunch of idiots. And we <laughs> dude, there are times where we'd almost do the same thing, dude. It's yeah, just yeah, like, of course dude, you're just like, you're also fuck so you. amped up. Oh yeah. Cause again, you're just like, dude, what the fuck man? <laughs> like constantly. And yeah, it, it's, man. you know, it gets wild, man. It's, it's just it's opening, real... opening 20 doors a day being like, there could you dude, everyone oh, more smart. doors than that. If, if they even have a door, yeah, <laughs> if true. they even have a door. So they had cool beads yeah. from Spencer gifts, but also yeah, I, yeah. like every once in a while I'd go to take a piss and I'd always be afraid of what was behind the shower curtain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> rip, it open, <laughs> rip it open real quick. Yeah, yeah. Just imagine doing we, that all day. Oh, and then dude, occasionally awesome. there's a guy behind it. <laughs> Oh, always, yeah. Yeah. and it, it's yeah. funny it's funny too because you know to, to this day you know it's like I, that that first deployment experience put such an overly heightened awareness in my system because i was already I, uh, you know those kids you know like when you're when you're younger and you have those kids who are just like paranoid of everything like oh don't do that you might get in trouble or you know like i better watch out you know like doing this thing i don't want to get hurt so if i take my bike off this ramp I, hopefully I land this way because if not, I'm going to be in a lot of fucking pain and trouble, you know? So it's like, there are those people that have that heightened sense of awareness. And then there's people that just fucking don't, you know, and those, those people sometimes are pretty reckless. And for me, I've always had that. But the thing that's funny is like, after that, it just got brought to a whole other fucking level to the almost point where like you develop a sixth sense, which is nuts. You know, and it's like, I mean, down to the point where like, I, I hate to say it, but like if, if someone knows they're going to die that day, like you wake up and you're like, today's my day. If my number's up, dude, they've usually fucking died, man. It was nuts. They Whoa. start giving out their personal belongings and stuff before we even go out on, you know, uh, on, a, on a, on an op, Jeez. you know, it's just, yeah, dude, it's fucking wild. So it's now just you like, talked to, you talked about those tunnels. I remember you told me a story about one of those when you were clearing yeah. houses. <laughs> yeah. Is that all right? So, Is that all right to get in? No, that? no, absolutely. Yeah. Totally, all yeah right, totally. Cause this one stuck that. with me a little. Yeah, so that one sticks with me too because that was still uh, one of the scariest experiences and not something I ever thought that I would ever have to deal with. Before anything, I'll preface or preface yeah. the story with you know, like if you uh, if you at the time if you got a knife kill in combat, you got a case of beer. So that was always like you know, it's kind of like a standard joke, but it did happen. And, you know, at this day, we cleared like 15, 16 houses, you know, and it's nightfall at this point in time. And so we, we take a position in the last house that we cleared out. And uh, we didn't even realize that this house had a, uh, a fucking, you know, a hidden door, you know, to the floor. Uh, we're, we're so good about clearing, you know, everything, every nook and cranny of the house. And for whatever reason, it just kind of uh, eluded us to, to look again for a tunnel. You know, because most of the time, especially at that time, they're they're freshly digging those. But this one, um, 
you know, we didn't realize this here because they actually made it nice. Like they put the floor back over it and it fucking lifted like a hatch and the whole thing. And they had a, that a, a rug on top of it. So, you know, it just, it wasn't obvious. And this was a huge learning experience for us because we decided like, okay, we're just going to, we're going to hold up here in this house. You know, we're going to all take positions around, you know, take turns sleeping, um, you know, and everyone just kind of keep your eye out for shit. And so a couple hours go by and you know it's like a couple guys are sleeping it's probably like 3 34 in the morning around that time and you know out of nowhere dude i just hear you know this fucking like people running and it's just like holy fuck you know like what's what's going on? and then you just hear pop 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 and, and we're being attacked dude they came in from under the fucking floor and i'm not far away from where they came in from but they were so goddamn quiet that it just, I, and I was so fucking tired too. Cause I mean, I think I've been up at that point in time for like almost three days straight, you know, and I barely, I barely slept maybe 15 minutes. And so one guy gets the jump on us. The other guy, he's, I'm closest to him. He jumps on top of me. Cause I'm just kind of like knelt down on the ground, kind of, you know, kind of trying to fucking chill out and, and relax for a moment. And uh, he just, he got the jump on me, dude. And we, we get into a huge fist fight. I'm trying to grab my weapon. He's pushing it out of the fucking way. Um, and then I, I had uh, my knife. So I grabbed my knife and I'm getting ready to fucking kill this guy. Well, he knocks that out of my hand a little bit. You know, I still have control of it a, a little bit, but not fully. And then he, um, he gets on top of me. you know like i'm barely five nine you know and it's like at that time i think i weigh about as much as i do i actually know i weigh i weighed less at that time it was probably like 180 pounds at that time mm -hmm. and um you know he he was able to kind of roll me and you know it's like i started kind of getting my bearings a little bit more because you know it just pulled me up from that fucking day yeah you just woke up in this fight <laughs> yeah i mean just, i wasn't i wasn't really even asleep but i was like in that dream state almost you know yeah. all awake and not paying attention and uh, so I, I start waking up and then every, everything starts kind of kicking in again. And uh, I roll this fucking guy, you know, we pretty much getting in, into like ground fighting, you know, and I'm trying to grab my gun, I'm trying to grab my fucking knife, anything I possibly can. I mean, if I, if I could have hit him with a suitcase, if one was nearby, I would have, you know, anything yeah. to fucking, you know, get this guy off of me. And, uh, you know, I, I grabbed my knife again, um, as a, you know, better hold because it kept getting fucking knocked out of the way and he's hit me and he's going for something too. And then he pulls a fucking knife and, uh, he pulls a knife out, barely gets it up to me, dude. I just fucking literally took my hand. I was just bah! right in his fucking <laughs> right, right down into his throat, dude. And, um, Oof. I remember, yeah, it's, that was, that was pretty scary fucking moment you know like uh not something i honestly even think about <laughs> much because yeah sorry really about that to... no no that's good dude i, I <laughs> sorry it... to bring that up no dude it's it's that's all great man so I, you know it's like that happened uh you know so i get my knife kill uh long story short and it's you know it's pretty nuts having that happen because from that point forward we really then fucking checked every house for everything yeah, and fuck. then on top of it too dude i just it became that much more paranoid so it's like you know you become you reach these different yeah. levels of paranoia and heightened awareness constantly and finally you just get to a point where you're just like ah what's around me you just like you're you, you, and you need that though you know it's like that's something mm. you definitely definitely fucking need uh to operate properly you know out in those environments and so you know it's like from that point forward, everything fucking changed for me, you know, like it, it changed my first firefight, but then having that happen and, you know, like that changed a thousand times fucking more, you know, at that point in time where it's just like, all right, like life, life is looking a little different now for me. <laughs> so, yeah, man. but, uh, I got my case of beer. So I was curious what cool. kind of beer yeah. you get. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, we got a uh, what was it? Uh, fucking Bush lights. <laughs> Some shit, the yeah. fuckers. Bro. Yeah, dude, shit, I'm shit, writing a letter to the president. Shit, after fucking, this. Oh, dude, Damn it. we no, you can't Fuck. even have alcohol. Yeah, you can't have alcohol out in the country, dude. It's fucking. I mean, anything. It's who it's smuggled funny, the Bush light? I don't know. <laughs> Which one of the Ayatollahs uh, snatched yeah. you, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I have, I have no idea who fucking snatched Fetch me a young bullshit. boy in a frosty bush light, please. Yeah, some bush, some, uh, yeah. bush light. <laughs> some, some natty ice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Milwaukee, he sees Milwaukee's yeah. best. He's like, yeah. unacceptable. We're Milwaukee yeah. ice. Stronger. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> have you uh was that uh remember the old college humor videos dude yeah. like, did you ever did yeah. you see the uh the the bro rape fucking documentary one they did i did yeah i did see that oh uh, uh, yeah <laughs> and it's like what are we having are we having some uh some natty ice <laughs> you know so you just always <laughs> talk talk that's the uh that's the uh the drink of bro rape you know that's the official <laughs> the official fucking drink of bro rape i mean it is uh, basically a roofie in a can pretty much yeah yeah it's not good so yeah, that was that was that experience. So that was pretty fucking. Yeah, wild. sorry. Uh, well, yeah, no, dude, you know. don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. No, uh, of course, I, of course. Yeah. I did. I don't want the fucking listeners to think I'm an asshole. Yeah, I did. We did talk about it a couple of times before we went on here. I'm not just like, yeah. tell me about like killing people and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, no. <laughs> I'm not a fucking yeah. moron. But uh, well, yeah. that's what no, they no, rec- no, that's yeah. what they it's- recommend for people now to you know because when you're saying you get these skills, you ne- or you get this mindset that you actually need to have and then you come back to like, you know, just work somewhere and it, now it doesn't suit yeah. you. And the thing they find works for people is that exposure of like reliving the moment over and over and over and over till it kind of loses its grip. Pretty much. I mean, there's that. But or I, lessons, I, I guess. Yeah, lessons. I mean, there's so many different studies on this stuff. I mean, I, I've even been a part of these studies. I've been a, a, One study they did on, uh, on us was um, they're doing the comparison as to <laughs> – what makes sets us apart from Fortune 500 CEOs, serial killers, and the people in my position? And they, literally, they wanted to know why we were so okay with killing, you know. And then, like, are we empathetic, sympathetic? Uh, what were the wires crossed? What was our upbringings like? More importantly, our IQs, you know, was the other thing. Was the thing that they were testing and measuring. So they put us through this huge test, and uh, they're like, "Yeah, you guys definitely are not serial killers." And we're like. Yeah, no shit. You know, Thanks. it's like, yeah, but, but it was funny because, you know, they're like, you know, you guys are in your own category and it's own now. Um, you know, like you guys both have the, uh, the power of empathy and sympathy, but your IQ though is what we're most interested in, you know, uh, after that, because, you know, all of us were scoring in between like 120 to 160. You know, so it's like that's I guess doctor engineer range to like yeah. fucking mathematician this was, range. This was special and, forces. Yeah, they're they're doing it across with a bunch of different units, and they're doing that between, uh, which we call it. Uh, they're doing that between the the business owner, like the Fortune 500 CEOs, and then serial killers. And they're like, all oh, out of all out of the three, the CEOs and the serial killers are the most similar. And you guys are kind of on your own thing. And then it started like a whole other study on us, and we're like, Jesus Christ. Like, yeah, we're clearly not fucking, you know, these monsters yeah. that people want mm-hmm. us to be. You know, we're, we're monsters, obviously, to uh, the enemy. You know, it's like, but we're not, you know, actual monsters on society. So, but it was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, that would yeah, always I mean, crack me up. Yeah. It's, it's super context dependent because they train you like, hey, in case shit pops off, you know how to do this stuff. And then when it does, you're yeah. immediately not going to be like, well, I don't know if I agree with this. You're just like, snap into yeah. it. You're like, I'm, fuck these guys. I'm yeah. not you so. Yeah. Yeah. While you're and wrestling it, a guy in his house, you're, you're yeah. not going to be like, uh, you know, maybe he has a good point. I'm going to let him, yeah, <laughs> exactly, let him yeah. go. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. It's yeah, like, uh, let's, let's sit here and hear what you have to say. What's your point yeah. of view? You know, yeah, it's well, like, that's, that's the thing that people don't understand. You know, it's like in, in, in times where you're presented with a life or death situation and you literally only have a second to make a cho- you know, choice it, you know, people are like, well, you know, why did the soldier have to do that? Why did the cop have to do that? You know, like, why did this happen? Why, why did the firefighter decide to Narcan that guy? And then, you know, he was shot and killed. It's like, Oh my God, like you just have these choices you have to make. Sorry. You know, like it sucks, mm-hmm. you know, but it is what it is, but and that's just life. But you know, it's like, there are a lot of things that I'm definitely not proud of, but, you know, but yeah. I don't let them, I don't let them haunt my dreams. I, if that makes any sense. So. Yeah. I mean, I'll, yeah, man. I mean, I, Fuck, I think I, wish I the, had that. The, <laughs> God, oh, there, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I think what's it's, uncomfortable for people is they, they'd rather be like, okay, someone who would be in that position is like way different than me. Like saying like CEOs, serial killers. It's like, you could yeah. put like mailmen, construction workers. It's like, if you get put into that environment, that's in, I think most of us, you know, just to, to kill people. Like I, you know, I would, I know I would for a fact, you know, I don't know how I'd handle it, but I, you know, you have to do that. Yeah. You never, you know, the thing is, is like when people talk like they're Billy badass, you know, it's like, you, you never, you never know 
how you're going to react in the situation until it's actually presented with you, you know, too. And the, the thing is, it's like, it's much different than getting into a fight. You know, it's like, if you just get into a fight or someone's like, yeah, you want to go, bro, what's up? You know, and like mm-hmm. all this bullshit and peacocking. And then, you know, then it happens and, you know, whoever wins wins. That's a completely different situation versus, you know, like you're just walking along and all of a sudden shit, someone jumps on you what the fuck are you going to do? You know, it's like, you could be the guy who wears the affliction shirts and watches all the UFCs and with his bedazzled fucking jeans and hope, hopefully, you know, he, you know, he can fucking throw down, you know, Mr. Big Talk. But in reality, like I might get his fucking ass kicked, dude. He might have his ass handed to him six ways to fucking Sunday in a minute, dude. And, 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 you know, that could be, he could be the guy who's doing all the big talk. And then all of a sudden it's just like, he doesn't know what that situation is going to present for him. Or, he could be all of a sudden like everything's just going to kick in and he goes into fucking, you know, uh, uh, roid rage mode and he can fucking kill that guy, you know? So it's just like, these are our two, you know, fields that will happen, you know? And so the psychology behind it is that, you know, for us, it's always going to be fight, you know? Um, That's what we think (laughs) until you get there, you know, Mm. it's the same thing. It's the same thing too. Like say you went to school your whole, uh, you know, your whole adult life to become a pathologist, you want to do autopsies for, you know, forensic autopsies. Do you know how many fucking people can't handle it? You know, it's like, yeah, yeah you know, it's like that was uh, when civilian life for me, that was one of the jobs that I did, you know, was working forensics. So it's like, I would watch these like pre-med or not pre-med, but these med students that would come in and they, they would supervise like an autopsy. Dude, you'd just see him drop left and right, throwing up. And it's like, they watched, you, worked, uh, you worked your whole fucking life for this, dude. You can't yeah, handle they this watched, shit. They yeah. watched CSI. They watched yeah. CSI. Mm-hmm. First off, what they thought was going to happen was they were going to see like a hot dead woman. Oh, yeah. And then they were going to take their glasses off and be like, looks like she's out cold. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And instead <laughs> they came in, something it was like funny. a suicide. <laughs> and it yeah. was like a fat guy suicide. And they were like, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, you got you got you got the fucking Rolling Stones playing in the background, and they're like, <laughs> yeah. "I wonder what happened here." Hmm. Yeah. Clearly, she was raped and murdered. Uh, doctor, can you please tell us was the time of death at eleven fifteen p.m. or was it eleven twenty? And the doctor's like, "Oh, it was definitely eleven twenty. It's like, dude, I don't fucking know. It's like just <laughs> dealing. With, that doesn't happen. I'll give you a broad range. Hopefully, you can fucking put it yeah. in. Like, seriously, that's that's mm. literally how it works. Like, how they died. Or like, I don't know. I've spent an hour autopsying this person, and I've cut pieces of tissue out to give you the stupid asshole doctors who stand in the corner so they can go make cassettes and slides, and then they'll tell you possibly what killed them. Yeah. You know, <laughs> good luck yeah. waiting. You know, and yeah, I, and a couple. Of who, days, who's so. going to question it? Be like, I don't think they're yeah. right. You're like, okay, that's what happened. Um, Moving on. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. But it's just funny because like you just see these people that, you know, they, they think they want to do this job, you know, any job, any job, but like this one's specific. They think they want to do this job. They've worked themselves up to it this whole entire point. They get into now they're, they're starting to be able to observe and even work in cadavers and med school and they can't handle it. You know, it's yeah. like because they forget the ma- most important thing. One, this is not TV. Two, you work on on children and babies. Oh, it's Jesus not just Christ, yeah. See, bro. everyone forgets about tap. that. Yeah, it's yeah, tap me, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh. Everyone forgets tap. about that stuff, dude. You, you work on teens who kill themselves. You know, you work on yeah. You, I mean, it, it, crime and homicide and suicide and just natural death or unnatural death. Everyone is is uh, affected by it. You know, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, you know, sucks. who you are yeah it's just they forget people forget these things you know so it's like you know you see a student come in and they're watching us and it's like yeah i'm working on a on a little boy who was you know beaten to death by mom's fucking piece of shit boyfriend you know and so and they're like oh god i can't do this and it's like fucking yeah sorry dude <laughs> it's like this is life and my job is to help you know figure out what the fuck happens so that way we have evidence to go to court and put this guy away for you know, hopefully the rest of his life, but with our piece of shit justice system, he'd probably get like, I don't know, negligent homicide. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> knowing our system, how things work, but you know, it's just yeah. like, that's just how shit is. You know, it's the same thing too. Like when people want to become, uh, you know, operators, everyone wants to be an operator. You know, it's like, I thought I wanted to be an operator, you know, uh, and by the time I was in training, I had to make the decision of like, am I 150% in this or am I not? And I knew it was just in me. I was 150% into it. You know, it's like, that means nothing else. I wasn't, I wasn't concerned with getting laid or all this other shit. Like this was life. This is what I fucking needed. I ate this for breakfast and this is what I wanted. 
And so that mentality, taking that on to the rest of life now, you know, is, is what helped me move forward and, and find success and things like that. Because, you know, it's, it's all or nothing. Uh, we as humans, we like to split ourselves up into 8,000 different ways, you know, like where it's like, well, the cool title would be awesome. Or I want to be an Emmy award winning, blah, 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 <laughs> you know, or I want to, I want to be a doctor, but I also want to do this. And, or I want to be a SWAT team leader. You know, it's like, it, you, you can go a thousand different ways, but if you're not 150% into it, like most people that they, they can't devote themselves 150% to something, um, you know, it, they, they just end up kind of getting stuck and being like in, in mediocre, you know, like, and the thing that sucks most about today, and I, I need to get this trademark. So anyone who's listening, Garbage. we as fucking Americans, especially here in fucking Zona land, dude, celebrate mediocrity. We celebrate mediocrity. And the thing that I mean by that is like, you can be a piece of shit, no talent YouTuber and dude, you get enough likes and then boom, you know, you can be a shit fucking like social justice warrior comedian and you can do all the uh, uh, like things. and subscribe to our YouTube, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> fucking get to it. You guys should be, you guys should be there. God damn it. But hey, you know, it's like, yeah, you can, man. you can do all this shit, dude. And it's like, all of a sudden it's, you get enough fucking dumb, mediocre people who don't amount to anything in their lives supporting other shitty, mediocre people. And all of a sudden they're placed on a pedestal you know, versus someone who's actually going out like you, Shane, is going out and doing the fucking uh-huh. work, doing the Lord's work, you know, putting out the good word, <laughs> you know, and fucking and putting in the time, you know, it's like they're getting it over you. And to people like me, that's fucking super goddamn irritating because it's like they don't fucking deserve that. They're just pandering and they're mediocre. Mediocre people are becoming successful today because other mediocre people are putting them up, propping them up. And people now are upset by hard work. You know, like when they see someone who has nice things or they are in a good position because they work their ass off to get there, they're immediately torn down by others, you know, because of uh, they're jealous, you know, and they, they, they feel like you're undeserving because you're not mediocre and you don't have the same mediocre mindset as they do because they're busy celebrating mediocrity. So, Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. yeah. So and it's, and it's shitty. Right? Yeah, I'm good. My dog just ran on steps. Which dog? Matilda. Um, Talking dogs? Let's talk dogs. I uh, know. Let's not <laughs> talk dogs. <Yeah. laughs> I know both of you. Matt's wearing a fucking Akita shirt right now. I, I saw Hell that. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. No dog talk. All right. <laughs> I want to get – we're running towards the end of this, Brandon, and I want to get one oh, more shit. story. Or we can oh, do it again. Yeah. But no, dude, we, didn't get, we, didn't get to, we didn't get to talk about too many of your, uh, yeah. your wound. I know you got fucking dinged up a couple times. Yeah, it's, it's been it's been quite a bit. Um, my last one, so uh, my last deployment, uh, we were in heat. It was in Iraq, um, surprisingly, and this was like my sixth full combat deployment. This isn't even including all the other uh, what we call rapid deployment operations, uh, meaning that we're getting called up within like twenty four hour notice and going on those ops. This was my last like big Wait, you deployment. Get, I'm sorry, you get like a twenty four hour notice, like you were at home. Yeah. Like I would come back from a deployment, like be home for like three days and all of a sudden we'd be like getting called up to go fucking do something. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. So this would happen uh, quite often. I think in, you Jesus know, total tw- 12 years of my career, I was a home a total of maybe four months, you know, like just cause I was, wait, home, wait, wait. Constantly. I was home, home a total, a total of four months within that, that time frame. you know, like oh, a eight. Yeah. It's, it's fucking how many nuts, deployments dude. how many deployments do you remember well yeah full combat deployments six so we did six full combat Fuck. deployments so yeah it's a lot but uh so this last deployment um we got ambushed uh and we we're on a on a long range patrol and so essentially what happened was um you know there's a fucking kid herding goddamn goats and sheep going down going down the road and you know daylight was starting to sneak up on us and so we had to get on top of this irrigation tower and uh it's it, it's like a house essentially like it's just you know probably like a 12 by 12 building you know or not 12 by 12 it's 20 by 20 by 20 i should say and uh it's about uh, 10 feet tall so we're on top of this hiding you know like staying low hopefully you know, this kid doesn't fucking hear us and the kid uh, had a couple of dogs with him too to help, you know, fucking herd every, you know, all his animals around. 
And one of the dogs, dude, just decided like, hey, man, like, what's up here? You know? And, uh, uh, and we're hoping, dude, we're like, oh, this fucking kid, dude, like, don't pay attention to here. Just grab your goddamn dog. You know, like, we don't want to shoot the dog. We don't want to kill the kid. You know, like, what? we don't want to be in this position because all outcomes, if you kill him, not good. If you don't kill him, not good. There's no fucking winning, you know? So at that yeah. point in time, we started propelling, you know, preparing for like a very hot extract, you know, like we needed to get the fuck out of there immediately. So we're already calling in for a helicopter to come get us. And little kid, dude, fucking curiosity, inspector gadget over here has to fucking climb the ladder, dude, and fucking come up top. Uh-huh. And so we fucking, we snatch his ass, dude, and we get into this heated debate on what we should do with him. And, uh, you know, it's like one thing was like, do we wait for the helicopter, you know, and like the helicopter is already going to give us away. Do we, uh, you know, do we kill him or do we let him go? Like, you know, either way we're, we're screwed. There's no fucking winning, you know, no matter what, because yeah. even if we, if we kill him, what if he's due back at that village right now and then he doesn't show up, then, you know, they might show up even earlier. So we let the kid go, made the decision to do that because why the fuck not, you know? Then uh, we get our orders to where to meet for our extraction point. So then we, we all get off the building. We start fucking booking it down this irrigation canal, which is uh, on the uh, left side of, of the road. And so we're running down. There's a huge crop to our left, you know, big empty crop field. And then to the right, it's palm groves and, and a, a ele- you know, an enemy shitty fucking village over here. So we're running down this ditch, trying to stay low. Hopefully no one fucking sees us. The sun's starting to come out. And all of a sudden, dude, I know her. It's just like, boom, boom, boom. And just fucking gunfire like crazy. So we get into this huge fight, um, you know, and we're starting to get like really fucking overrun. This kid ran back and fucking told his homies, you know, like, hey, we're over here. And they just- That little fucker. Yeah, dude, they, they fucking called every, they called the whole goddamn town up, dude, and they, they came over. Quick. Ah. And so we started getting ambushed. Um, I got wounded really badly. I actually uh, got hit really hard. Um, so there was a mortar that landed in front of me, uh, took out one of my buddies. I still actually have a piece of his bone stuck in my left leg. It's just floating around now. It was, was stuck in there, and they didn't know that. And then I also had a piece of shrapnel go through my right leg and break my tib and fib my two, your two shin bones mm-hmm. um i had no idea that happened you know and the only other thing that i didn't know happened was that my back was hurting really bad but i didn't know why and my legs were fucking really starting to like, give out on me and so um we get into a huge fight and uh, firefight and i uh I, like i kind of sat up a little bit you know and i was getting ready to put my gun up on the uh on the edge of the bank and then all of a sudden dude I just right in the fucking chest dude and I got hit right in the chest and the next thing I remember is waking up in a helicopter and so what happened was um I had uh what's called a subluxation between L5 and S1 so it's a a pretty much it's considered a partial dislocation but mine was almost full almost a full dislocation of my spine six herniated discs in my neck and back. Um, and then my, uh, I got shot in the chest. Uh, luckily my plate and on top of it, I had a medical trauma kit right here and I had a bunch of shears and stuff like that. And the bullet actually hit part of my shears, went in, bent in and broke my sternum. And so it didn't go through luckily. So that trauma kit saved my life as well as the shears. Damn. Uh, yeah, bent everything and stopped my heart, broke my sternum. Um, and, uh, like so out of all that, you know, like my biggest injury is my back because back injuries are fucking like, that's, that's it. You're done. Like there's, there's no coming back from that. They thought I was going to be paralyzed from the waist down. Um, you know, which was really scary. Uh, and then they're like, you know, it's good that you have feeling in your toes, you know, but like all the other things that are going on, like the, there's a ton of pain, uh, down my legs and, and my lower back. But, you know, it's like there's all types of nerve damage and they'd have to do a bunch of surgeries to repair it. So when that happens, you have a like 60 to 70 percent of becoming paralyzed for sure just because of the fucking surgery. So I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm like, fuck that. You know, like I'll I'll take I'll take my goddamn chances, you know, like hopefully, you know, I know medicine really well. Um, So I was like, I'll just take my chances with with healing this type of injury and, and figuring out what else I need to do. So. 
you know, a couple, a couple months ago by doing a lot of uh, recovery training and stuff like that and lifting and changed my diet, you know, so that was a big one. Um, and, uh, that, that helped, you know, get me better. I wasn't a hundred percent, it was about 90%, but you know, in, in my head, I'm like, put me back in coach, you know, like ready to yeah. fucking go. And they're like, they're like, yeah, no, that's not happening, dude. You're done. They're like, you either become an instructor or you, um, or you change your position, essentially, like choose a new job field, you know, like I can still be a corpsman, but I, you know, I, I would take position probably working at a hospital or, uh, as, uh, you know, some other type of, you know, facility. And so I was like, well, I'll become an instructor, you know, full time, you know, I've already instructed classes before. And at that time too, this is right after we transitioned from being Marine Fort Reconnaissance to now MARSOC. So now this is a whole new thing for us. I became a MARSOC instructor for a bit. Uh, MARSOC is what took over and that's like the Green Berets for the Marine Corps now and then they brought back Force Recon and they consider them kind of like your ranger units so but uh, they changed everything it's it's weird how they set it up but so I was a part of that transition and I helped become a instructor for a bit and I was just like yeah this is gay I miss you know miss getting to go rock and roll with my boys you know being inside uh being inside you know the base all the time and doing this shit and it's wasn't fun. So finally at that point in time, dude, I was just like, well, I guess I'm going to take my medical retirement. <laughs> you know? And, yeah. And yeah, so I was getting out and they, uh, they made me what's called an inspector instructor, um, for a reserve base. And then, uh, my first job home, I actually became a, a cop and I fucking hated that. And then I went back to the medical field and then, uh, didn't like doing that as a civilian. And then I went and became a, uh, uh, started working for the government. So, you know, it just it, everything, you know, it was, it was, it was so much transitioning and, and trying to figure out life, you know, and that's what sucks because, you know, for people like me, you expect either one of two things, you know, it's like, you're either going to retire doing that job, you're going to die doing it. Um, and that's it. You forget about the third option, you know, and again, that, that mentality where we all think we're invisible, where you get, you get hurt too much you, know, you get rock and roll too much that you, you got to retire, man, really, you know, like yeah. that's your career. So and it's just like, Oh shit, what do I do now from this point forward? You know? So it's just been, it's been like setting forth into a whole new life now where um, now everything's fucking great, dude. It's it, those are two separate lives that I live now, which is crazy. I don't even think about that stuff anymore because I'm so focused on this stuff with like my wife and, you know, the family that we're building and stuff like that. You know, that to me is like, got a hot wife. Everybody. He's got a hot wife. That's what's up. Thank God. Thank God. I got, I got yeah, a yeah. fucking, that. I got a hot wife. He's hot wife. Yeah. Us. yeah I got, oh, I got it was all worth it. It was all yeah. worth it. It was, dude. <laughs> loyal. <laughs> loyal. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Loyal, baby girl, dude. I, yeah, I got lucky, good, man. man. Loyal. Yeah, I've been with her for fucking uh, eight years now, dude. So I got a couple got wolves. Loyal. Yeah, dude. I see, I do, are the wolves still around? Or you? I think yeah, I lost are. one, right? No, I didn't. No. Um, all right, good. Yeah, no, no, we got. I like it. This we, is this yeah. is good. You're the first guest I've had on where I just bring up tragedies that have happened. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, I didn't want to. Uh, yeah, you want to talk about awful. your dogs dying? <laughs> yeah, this is awful. No, this is fun. Well, it's you know you know what's shitty is that like I've got a fucking plethora of horrible things that have happened to me, and then you know it's like it's, so you'd be like, didn't this happen? I'd be like, probably. <laughs> you know, like yeah, or man. yeah, this you know it's just like that's here's the thing you know. But what was oh, it like being a cop? Work? So being a cop was, uh, especially in these times, Jesus, uh, being a cop was, was great. You know, like I actually did enjoy it. And it was funny too, because like they fucking hired me so goddamn fast. Bet, they're, dude. Like, oh, they're like, yeah, dude. we didn't give a fuck about your back, dude. They're like, hey, with your experience, your background, they're like, they literally hired me in a month, dude. Those and cops it's like, are probably jerking off, uh, too. Dude, yeah. Sure. Well, like, they hired forces, was, Yeah, I thought about that, but... Well, uh, oh, was, yeah, was, dude. I'm just, was, you know, I'm a cop. Yeah, yeah. Pulls yeah. their belt up. They're like, yeah, you know, I... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I got some I was training. thinking about the SEALs. Yeah. All of them. All of them, dude. It's so funny. Well, it's funny, too. I actually own American Sniper on DVD, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pretty uh, much the same. I uh, once thought about joining the military, and, yeah. uh, you know, or, or I was a, uh, I worked in motor pool in the army and it's like, Oh, cool, dude. I'm glad you did that. You know, anyone that serves yeah. in the military, I'm like, good for you, dude. Fucking awesome. Like, yeah. You're you. welcome. You go girl. You know, like you know, I, yeah. you're welcome. But it's just, yeah, yeah. But it's just, it's funny. Cause it's just like, um, they fucking hired me super fast. And my friend, Mike, who also was like, Hey, you're leaving. I'm, I'm going too. And I was like, okay. Cause he's from here. So, uh, so we both got hired that dude it was so fast and so we go through the academy and all sorts of shit dude and before we even like finish up with the but academy, no offense no offense that's <laughs> that's awfully risky for the cops to just be like yeah 
Yeah, let's just uh, let's run these through. Let's run these guys through real quick. What oh, do you think they might have PTSD? Of, no, no, no. Yeah, get them in no, there. No, get them exactly. a handgun and get not them out on the streets. Not even, <laughs> not even just that, dude. Not even just that. But they like so before we even went he to clearing the academy, houses, freaking out. Dude, they they put us. They put both Mike and I uh, in what's called pre academy. So normally you get assigned to a precinct or some shit, and you're just doing paperwork. No, they sent us over to SWAT division. <laughs> so uh, that makes sense yeah that makes yeah they sent us sense. yeah they sent us over there and uh you know eventually what happened was after you know i graduated and stuff like that i became uh what's our, our unit basically that i was on we did all the vice stuff and uh like the high risk warrants and then i eventually became a canine handler and i fucking hated yeah, doing that because right. i love dogs and i don't like putting dogs in danger and i just mm-hmm. didn't really think about it too much uh plus my dog had some health issues um got a uh, epilepsy so it's kind of a bummer but um you know it's like i just working again in a whole new political environment for me especially one that's just now dealing with like more local politics i was like yeah this is fucking gay you guys suck and plus on top of it too it's like everyone that i worked with with this you know with only a handful of people are really cool but everyone that i did work with they fucking sucked <laughs> like yeah. they they just shit senses of humor like you were either a part of their clique or you weren't and like being that mike and i came from a whole other background and didn't fucking start off where a lot of these guys did oh that's the other thing too they fucking hated us because they put us right into the division without even like doing all the all the shit i mean we still had to you know field training you know like it's a 90 day period of uh you know actually doing patrol shit um but they just put us right in and you know it's like there's some guys that were like super appreciative of it and then there's a bunch of other dudes who are just like fuck you you're on your way you know and it's just like yeah but how i mean that's yeah. fucking that's unbelievable dude yeah it's it's really shitty you know it's so per- it's like when people yeah go ahead sorry but you know uh, so it's like it was funny because at that point in time i was like this is gay i should have gone to federal you know like i should have gone to federal law enforcement because at least over there i know a lot of those guys and depending on what agency you go to because not every agency is this way but if i went to like the da or like homeland Dude, it's normally Wayne's World party time, man. It's fucking awesome. Everyone's like great sense of humor, you know. Just like, just really good oh, yeah, level heads on, dude. Up. Dude, They're it's just like, that's Yo. dude. The D, <laughs> yeah, dude. The, the DEA, man. I fucking love those guys. I got a lot of friends over in the DEA still, um, and they are just a wild bunch, man. They're fucking fun. Damn. Shit. Yeah, dude. They're fun, man. They they can party. They can take jokes. They can dish it. They can fucking. It's just good, like senses of humor. You know, mm-hmm. like while you're going through the day to day, you know, you're not walking, you're not working with a bunch of people with stick shoved far up their fucking assholes. Uh, you know, it's just like, it's nice having that, you know, so, it, and that's not always the case. Definitely not always the case, you know, but for, you know, like the DA for sure, the ATF, who, in my opinion, again, I don't believe they should be a fucking law enforcement agency, but even the ATF, those guys are really fucking cool. Uh, I have a friend. She's in the ATF. She actually used to be, I think I told you about her, Shane. Uh, she was presidential secret service for both Bush terms and Obama one term. So she's got some fucking stories she shared yeah, with me. Yeah, you call, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but she's over there at the ATF and she's just fucking, she's awesome. Um, you know, it's just, it's shit like that. You know, it's like, it, it was much better there once I went over to that side later on and I had a great time doing that and then started what I'm doing now and which I won't say, but you know, I'm having an, I'm having a great time doing what I'm doing now. And, uh, you know, it's, I'm making, making good money. That's all I care about. Fuck yeah, man. That's, that's awesome. That's, that's Yo, really, let's, uh, it. let's wrap this up here and then let's, uh, uh, let's, let's do this again though. Cause, uh, yeah. Absolutely. Want to get into it more. Want to hear some more fucking wild ass. So didn't you tell me some <laughs> shit? All right, hold on. All right. Fuck the other time. Didn't you tell yeah. me about a guy in Afghanistan? Oh, wait, I think I know who, story. Maybe there was a line around the house of dudes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'll get into that real quick. Just real quick. All right, all right, all right. Because right. right, this so. story was like <laughs> – Yeah. All right, also one more thing, because I think I remember you saying something like the tr- the, the fighting, uh, the Iraqis you were fighting against, where it was like a fucking rat's nest. And then Afghanistan was at least a little more – like this. it was a little more respectable at least, the warriors – I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. For the I, for the most part, like I don't know. Fighting, I, I, yeah. No, fighting fighting the Taliban. You know, it's it's a lot different than fighting fucking you know, 
former Fedayeen soldiers in Iraq and shit like that, and then just insurgencies. Because then on top of it, you you also have Sunni and Shiite Muslims and anyone who's got the fucking word Wahhabi behind their name, they're usually the most extreme. And then you have the Kurds. So you have like all these different factions of people Maybe fighting. Yeah, the, Kurds, the Kurds are cool, right? Kurds are cool, dude. Like I'm, I'm Kurds? great. Yeah, I love the Kurds. Yeah. Dude. They're good. Yeah, they're good Terry, man. So, yeah, <laughs> but when, you know, like when we're out in Afghanistan, it's a little good bit Terry. fucking, yeah, good Terry. Uh, but when we're out in Afghanistan, it's, it's, it's different over there, you know, uh, as far as one, the terrain that you're fighting in, because it's so fucking diverse. Like literally you'll be in desert one area and the next area that you're in, it's like lush fucking forest with waterfalls and shit, dude. It's nuts. You know, when you think of Afghanistan, you just think of again of the Flintstones, and it's, it's not all like that. That's what's crazy. So it's like, you'll be on snowy mountaintops fighting. You'll be in areas that's just dense with fucking like, you know, wooded forests. Uh, and, you know, cause it's right there on the border of like, you know, it's like, you know, China and Russia and all this other shit, you know, yeah. nearby. And, and so it's like, and the other thing too, it's crazy. It's like, you're all of a sudden fighting with a, uh, like some red haired Chinese guy, you know, who joined the Taliban, dude. He's got like a red hair and a red beard. And you're like, what the fuck is this? You know, yeah, they start, throwing, they start uh, throwing creative players uh, at you. Oh, uh, like, dude, pretty is- much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you're like, like who, who made this fucking avatar? What is this shit? You know, it's like, like, what, what is this nonsense, dude? What kind of, what kind yeah. of fuckery is happening around here? <laughs> oh, creative player, right, 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 so, Asian, yeah, 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 right, Asian Taliban. You know? Yeah, dude. It's like, <laughs> it's like if someone took a fucking uh, ro- rocket league card and made it a person. You're know, like, fucking how about it? So, but anyway, so I'll tell that story. So uh, we were looking, we were looking for a, a, a bomb maker, and this guy uh, decided that one of the towns, you know, it's like we let the the village know like who we were looking for, and they wanted him too. This was a Kurdish village, so these guys are all on our team for the most part, and um, so we're looking for this guy. <laughs> and uh, and we, we let everyone know and come to find out dude like a couple of days later one of the one of our interpreters is like come 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 and we're like what and then you're like they found you know the guy that we're looking for and we're like all right where is he you know and so we all fucking get the trucks and shit and we're driving and we drive up and he's like dev 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 and so we all stop there's a line of men dude outside of a fucking house they captured this bomb maker we're looking for they're taking turns butt fucking him <laughs> and we're like as punishment dude we're like we're like what is dude, we're like what the fuck are you guys we're like dude that's fucking gay what are you guys doing and one of the guys is like fuck you i am not gay he's just like iron <laughs> sheet man and we're like we're like dude you're butt fucking this guy to death like what are you doing like that's insane and then it's like i am not gay and we're like that's fucking gay dude that's fucking gay. So, so they're beating the piss out of this dude holding him down and just raping the shit out of this dude's ass oh my god it's just like, yeah oh. and and we're like <laughs> it's know, so funny for them to be like yeah. this isn't gay dude Shut oh, up. dude. well the worst <laughs> part about it is you know me as you know the the team corpsman i have to fucking treat him so that way we can interrogate him so uh, it's like now I have to fucking treat this fucking rape. Oh, his, his you know? butt. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah, it was. I didn't even fucking start. It was like a ninety was, Ayatollah cum slam. Oh, dude, yeah, <laughs> pretty much, man. It was. It was. It was. It was, it was oh, yeah. Yeah. Iraqi, it was Iraq's hottest bukkake party, dude. It was fucking oh, just, uh, it was insane, man. And was also, really too, nice. those guys are eating dinner. They're with their family, and someone comes up to them, like, like, oh, they got another bomb maker. I got to go. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Napkin on the and table. Not, another game. Not just that. Honey, I don't want to do this, honey. There's going to yeah, be a long like, line. I want to get yeah, there first. I wonder if people Black <laughs> Friday that when they know the bomb oh, maker, dude. they like, I know, they're out there, like, like tents and shit. <laughs> Arms crossed, all like fucking, like, all right, now let's just fucking thing to start. You know, Dude, I, can only Black keep my dick, I can only keep my dick hard for so <laughs> yeah. long. You know, like, what the fuck is happening? Uh, yeah, dude, I couldn't fucking believe it. Uh, it's funny because shit like that happens all the fucking time there. No one talks about it. You just get a you know, train run like, on you? No, just gay <laughs> shit like that, dude. These oh, yeah. Like, I heard like, there's a problem know, with the little boy shit, too. Dude, like, big time yeah, little boys getting not, snatched up. Oh, uh, dude, not even just that, man. I mean, it's like a rite of passage sometimes with some, some of the villages over there. Like, it's like these. These boys are just getting fucking, you know, raped by the uncles and shit. Of course, it's always an uncle. And, uh, you know, and uh, who was it? Patton Oswald said it best with uh, Uncle Touchy's Naked Puzzle Basement. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but you know, it's uh, it's just crazy, the shit that goes on over there. Because, you know, it's Funny, like, in, in Islam or in uh, Arabic, you still keep uncle in your name. 
Yeah, you know? pretty much. Dude. Like yeah. bin al uncle Moh- if, yeah. if you are a rapist, that's how the yeah. in, in Arabic <laughs> uncle means uh, male rapist. Yeah, it's, it's Sadiq <laughs> means a bunch of shit too. You know, it's like yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uncle should mean male rapist. Uh, but <laughs> it's just it's wild, dude. I mean, it, from from doing that shit to then hanging out like bazaars and stuff with each other to having like gay secret fuck palaces in the back of these rooms, you know, like where they just have gay orgies. Mm. And it was funny because like recently, like in <laughs> Dubai, fuck? dude. Yeah, in Dubai recently, <laughs> my, one of my buddies shared this intel with me. Uh, the uh, government cracked down on like uh, basically these house, you know, all, like all these bars. They were bringing in Filipino male prostitutes, dude, and Thai male like sh- la- lady boys, dude. Bring they're bringing in. lady boys in. They're bringing lady boys in, dude. Yo. Just, yeah, dude. They're fucking. They're just gone, gone to town. Well, just, that is not this, gay. That yeah, is yeah. not gay. <laughs> well, that funny, is actually so, not gay. So here's here's the greatest part, dude. So it's like those fucking the government would come kick down the doors, dude, and they go in to fucking raid these houses or these bars and shit, these bazaars. They go, they kick down the doors, dude. And there's like several men, dude, like fucking 10, 15, 20 guys, dude, just. <laughs> fucking having these fuck parties with these asian lady boys dude and uh and they're like what are you doing that's just gay like one of my buddies just telling me about this because he, he's there on this house and he's all he's all he's all uh that is gay you're shame shame and, and the fucking the other arab dudes are like what do you mean i didn't know that this was uh that this was not female what do you mean? And then they, they'd want to start fighting with it. It's like you <laughs> trying to fight him. <laughs> bouncing up and down. You're riding a reverse fucking like, what the world, dude. And the dick, you know, it's just fucking dick, dick and balls, dude. It's like, how did you not know that was a dude? You fucking liar, you know? So then I guess I guess oh, I guess so some funny. of the I guess some of the people that got picked up on that, dude, were like chic sons, dude. like oil barons, fucking children. Dude. They got the internet. It's so funny yeah. to get tripped Unlimited on that. You're like, what? oh, dude, You're that. You're like, yeah. yeah, give me two of those. It's they just have like their browser <laughs> history just appears in real life, and they're like, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck, fuck. dude, yeah. turn around and fighting. Somebody breaking in, be like, that's gay, and you being like, all right, we're fighting now. You and me are fighting now. Yeah. Yeah, fucking... <laughs> we're being like, well, hold on a minute. Yeah. There's actually this is complex, but um. Yeah. <laughs> I can explain. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> All right. Oh, like, it's fucking wild, dude. Yeah, it's funny. All right, let's let's do this again. I gotta go. I just so got yelled at. Uh, oh. Boys, Brandon, fuck Fantastic. yeah! Thanks for coming on. Um, yeah, yeah let's awesome. do this again, dude. This was great. Matt, it was great meeting you, dude. dude Brandon, you. you're the man. Also, that whole thing about not being able to write a book, dude. Get the fuck out of my face with that. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> Jesus Christ, uh, it's insane. Brandon, what's uh, your? Uh, if you want your social media, you can say it. If not. No, no, I don't. Yeah, I'll, good I'll, call. I'll good for you. Yeah. Good for yeah. fucking you, dude. I uh, did. I well, it's funny because I get call. asked a lot. I get asked to do a lot of podcasts, and even been uh, asked to be a, uh, a spokes, you know, talking head on Fox News a few times. And uh, I just will not fucking do it. Dude. Yeah. I'm just yeah, like, good. no, yeah. I'm like, I'd rather come on here, have fun with you guys, versus go to some other fucking thing. Just be like, meh. You know. It's well, like, Fox yeah. asked, just send him, send them my information. I'll just pretend. I'll go on there and fuck with them. Oh, dude, on, I yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I served. I served a bunch. No, I'll just Absolutely. be like, yeah, he couldn't do yeah. it, so he called me. What's going on? Yeah, yeah. What's up? What can I answer? Podcaster. Uh, I just, I, I, if I did do it, I'd love to do it. Like, who is it on a uh, Stern? The guy does all the fucking. Uh, the guy oh, goes and does all. Yo, Stern, yeah, no, 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 no. It's that guy Stern that got does busted. all. Did it? Yeah, it's that guy. Stern that got that busted like today. The news and shit. Oh, what? did he? Uh, yeah. Somebody, somebody tweeted out. Uh, he was on the View, and they uh-huh. were like. They were like, you had your, you, you said the N word. And he was like, hold on. I never said the N word. I had, we did have a Klansman that would come on. And he's like, and the way I feel about it is if you're, we're going to confront racism, let's have this guy oh, make a Jesus fool out of Christ. himself saying it. And then it just cuts to him, but literally to Howard Stern in full blackface being like, you fucking, <laughs> like, just, <laughs> and it was like, He's, he's got to be cooked, dude. He's oh, gotta, dude! How did he make it this long? He he was definitely did, uh, weaseling about. I was literally. I don't mean to like. I'm not a snitch. I'm not like. Sure. I'm not Jose Canseco on snitching. steroids. Yeah, that's not snitching. But yeah. Jose Canseco just started snitching as soon as he got caught. He was like, everyone else is doing it. No, but, but Stern oh, Stern dude. was on NBC when I got fired. Like he was doing like uh, the Voice yeah. or all those yeah, shows, dude, and I yeah. kept being like, yeah. "How the fuck is Howard Stern here?" And I'm getting <laughs> oh, fired. Dude, I know. Dude. Yeah, of all fucking things. Well, he did defend you, dude. Like that was that was cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah well, dude, he was, fucking was, better. 
Yeah, that might be better. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he had a, he had a collection of he had like a personal collection of retarded people for his entertainment. Yes, absolutely. You know, it's like <laughs> which like which did just, rule, which did yeah. rule. Oh, but again, dude, yeah, you're, you're putting him in a different time frame when like you could totally do yeah. that. And, and yeah. executives are like, good thinking. Bro. We should have never got rid of that. We still need Beetlejuice. No. Beetlejuice is still the funniest <laughs> this shit, dude. Yeah, this shit Honor. fucking sucks. I don't like any of it. Yeah. There's no humor anymore. No nah, man, it's fucking bullshit. blows. Keep shitheads, yeah, shitheads. You know, it's like yeah. make shitheads great again. <laughs> <laughs> make shithead humor great again. Fucking a. Still, it'll never die. It'll never die. Uh, yeah, All right, boys. All right, brother. I'm gonna go. All right. Yo, Brandon, we'll do this again, dude. You're the yeah, fucking man. man. You're the fucking Absolutely. man. It's awesome. You guys See you soon, bro. Love you guys. Later, See you, bro. See you, bro. Love Bye. you.